I'd like to call the meeting to order. Mrs. Burns, roll call. Mr. Sullivan? Present. Mr. Parentano? Present. Mr. Allen? Present. Mrs. Bowman? Here. Ms. Boyle? Here. Present. Mr. Feather is absent with prior notice. Mrs. Hallenbeck? Present. Mr. Kovitz? Here. Mr. Marrington? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. The board met in executive session this evening prior to this meeting to discuss matters related to litigation. The district mission statement. In the Chamonix community builds futures by empowering each child to become a productive citizen and a lifelong learner. Mrs. Burns, any announcements? No announcements. Mr. Jones, superintendent's report. Good evening, everyone. I have a few items in the uh, report that we've already mentioned at prior meetings, but I, I can hop down to uh, Peter Furrow here, a Maple Point student, placed third out of 60 competitors from area schools in the Chemical Education Foundation's Bucks County You Be the Chemist Challenge. Uh, his third place finish means he continues on to the state round at Penn State, so congratulations to Peter. Uh, girls basketball had a great year this year, uh, exciting year. They went as far as any Neshaminy team has gone uh, losing in the semifinals to Garnet Valley, but they had a wonderful season. We congratulate them on great success. Uh, we had young elementary students at a STEM design challenge that was held at the IU uh, last month, a, a team representing the Chamonix out of Schweitzer. And we also had our AE students from all of our middle schools there for a different day for the similar type of challenge. Uh, our, our teams represented us very well. Uh, they worked together well, they were prepared, and it was uh, 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 good to see uh, our teams in a collaborative form like that, uh, working uh, to not only together, but in a design fashion that uh, is representative of a lot of the work that we do today on the STEM side. And so congratulations to our students. There's also a couple articles in my report about art students, young art students. We had a student out of uh, Schweitzer, second grade student, uh, Andy Chavez, and her art was recently honored. She was representing the Chamonix School District at a countywide event celebrating the arts, the Bucks County Intermediate Unit Student Gallery in Doylestown. Uh, her collage was selected and, and will represent the Chamonix there for the entire year as part of their exhibit, and we're excited for her. It's a, it's a beautiful piece, and it's in the report. You see a picture of it. It's really well done. She did an excellent job. In addition, Miller Elementary student, Nikisha Arun, was best in the show for elementary at the Pennsylvania Art Education Show, Department of Education in Harrisburg. So we had two real strong young artists out there representing the Chamonix, and we're excited for the work that they do. And they are representative of a really strong arts program here across the district, as uh, we all know. We had a successful parent program, district-wide parent program. Uh, we had a, the clinical director from Anxiety Behaviors Clinic at the Children's Hospital in Philadelphia offering parents and guardians coping and intervention tips for school-aged children to reduce anxiety, increase communication, and improve overall mental health. The topic doesn't sound overly exciting, but it is an issue that's really facing a lot of us as we deal with our young people. Uh, we, we deem them under the umbrella of social, emotional factors. We had over 200 parents from the district in attendance that evening. It was a really uh, well-received program, a strong presenter, and it is part of our district's strategic plan. In our strand two, we talk about trying to do better to support our kids on a social-emotional level, and this is one way that we can help support our kids by supporting their families and supporting their parents. And so it was a good program and well-received. And I thank uh, Mrs. Burkholder for helping put that program together. The Neshaminy All Sports Hall of Fame, uh, the nominees, uh, the, the, the new members to be inducted on April 5th were listed in my um, report. We congratulate all of them on their upcoming uh, honor. There's also a reference to the Alumni Achievement Award. That's a new award, different from the Hall of Fame, which is more sports related, to recognize alumni just doing good work in their career and in their life. If you know of somebody, you can go to the, my uh, report that is part of our board docs system 
and find the form there to send some information in, or you can contact the superintendent's office and we'll get it to the right people for you. And then finally, the Harlem Wizards basketball game is coming. There's a whole list of people who are participating. Somehow my name got included. I'm not quite sure why, but they had a practice today, and now I, I, we're in trouble. Um, if anybody knows somebody who can shoot from the three-point line, we definitely need that player to be joining our team. No need for us to keep practicing. Uh, that game's happening on the 6th of April to Saturday. You can buy tickets if you want to laugh at us. And uh, April 6th, Saturday. That's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Jones? I believe we have one uh, presentation tonight. We have two. Two, two actually. Two. We have two presentations. Um, can, I'm going to go to the podium to make the first presentation. Savion Hebron, uh, how about you stand up because we'll, we'll confuse you with your brother right there next to you. And you can stand here right next to me. And I, and I told Savion, I, I mentioned his name at an earlier board meeting uh, because some of you who were there at that meeting might remember my comment at the time was uh, on, on my block in Northeast Philly, like we would race from uh, telephone pole to telephone pole. And it was like exciting if you were the fastest on your block. This man's the fastest in the state, fastest in the states. That's, that, that's a pretty big block. That's a, that's a lot of people living on that street. Um, so here, let me, I want to read. Uh, Coach had a meet today. The spring track season is up and running already. This was winter track, state competition. And so uh, Coach Sid White prepared some remarks. I, I want to read on his behalf. Uh, some nice words to give you a flavor for uh, the accomplishment here. Tonight, we're proud to recognize one of our star athletes from the Chamonix High School, Savion Hebron. I'm going to say Hebron. Uh, on February 24th, Savion earned the title of state champion for the 200-meter dash at the Pennsylvania Track and Field Coaches Association Indoor State Track Championship held at Penn State University in State College. Savion placed first with a personal best time of 21.5 seconds. At, at the same meet, he also placed fourth in the 400 meter dash championship with a time of 48.76 seconds and joined teammates Emmanuel Ampof Ampofo, uh, Ethan, say it? Uh, Emmanuel Ampofo, Ethan Nolan, and Savon Hebron. Savon Hebron, sitting right here with you. <laughs> And they took fourth place finish in the, in the boys' 4x4 four four, uh, relay championship race with a time of 3 minutes, 24.18 seconds. His performance also earned him a trip to the New Balance National Indoor Meet held in New York City on March 8th through the 10th, where he competed in the 200-meter race and the 4x400 four four relay with his Nishamani teammates. Savion has run indoor track during his entire high school career and will be competing in the spring track for the fourth year this spring. Uh, that's not easy to do. That's a lot of work. Winter season, spring season, they run right together, and it's hard to keep up with your academics. He also played football for three years, so now add that in, three sports. Is, is, re is really impressive in today's world. And congratulations to Savion, the Chamonix High School coach, Sid White. Uh, we, we wish he was here. He's, he's done a remarkable job helping him with these achievements. And <laughs> coach, and, and has he kept up with his academics? Where is he headed next year? Outstanding student who has a scholarship to Penn State University. Scholarship to Penn State University. <laughs> Stay right here. <laughs> Board President, Mr. Sullivan, would like to congratulate you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's not easy to come out. Uh, you know, high school kids are very busy, brother and sister. 
His brother's a senior also, sister's in ninth grade. And what I tell, uh, when the students come out to do presentations, some of you who've been here know I often tell them, this is a good time to get home and do your homework, so you don't have yeah. to stay <laughs> for the whole meeting. So I'm inviting you to actually get home so that you can take care of those academics. <laughs> Though you're welcome to stay. Congratulations, thanks mom and dad for coming tonight, thank you. And our next presentation for tonight will be Ed Furman from the Certified Public Accounting Firm of Maui is going to give, uh, present the 2017-2018 audit report. Ed, it's all yours. All right. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I passed out two documents, one, a smaller one called audit presentation, and I'll start with that one. The uh, first page of that handout is just the items I'm going to be covering, uh, the agenda of the items. Page after that, required communications. Uh, we issued an unmodified audit opinion on the financial statements, which is a clean opinion. And we also issued an unmodified audit opinion on the single audit work. Single audit work is based on the amount of federal programs uh, you, that you receive. We're required to do certain testing by the federal government with that. Uh, we also issued what's uh, called a SAS 114 letter, which is an audit committee letter. And that's whenever we issue an audit opinion, we have to also issue this letter to the highest level of the audit client, which would be you as the board. And we're required to communicate if we had problems with the audits or issues or material adjustments. And that was clean. We had nothing to report there to the board. And a 115 report would have been issued if we had a situation of material internal control weakness, which we did not have from our testing. So that was not issued. One thing with the financial statements, is that uh, you prepare what's called a comprehensive annual financial report. And that's about a third long, longer than a typical government financial statement. And it's presented to a national organization uh, to be reviewed. And there's only 12 uh, school districts in Pennsylvania that, that uh, issue a, a CAFR each this past year. Uh, the page after that is I just summarized some of the audit testing that we do. Uh, we review, again, the internal control system and test that. Uh, we do a lot of independent confirmation work where we can. And at the bottom of the area, uh, we, we also use a data extraction software. So we actually download 100% of the transactions of the, of the district. Uh, we compare it to trends from prior years. Uh, we identify any material transactions, unusual trends, and then we use that as our basis for, for testing. Uh, one thing we run with that is called a Benford's Law Test, which is the next two pages. And uh, Benford was a mathematician who came up with a formula that based on the size of a population, so many transactions should start with the digit 1 and the lesser amount 2 through 9. So since we've captured all of your data, uh, we run this chart just to see if there's anything unusual. And with the first digit, uh, Benford Law, uh, there was nothing really to, to report there. Uh, we ran a double digit one on the next page. And there were a couple, you see a couple spikes there. And we drill down into that activity. And the activity really related to uh, payroll transactions where uh, the first two digits of most of the, the employee checks run with these numbers. So again, nothing unusual from our testing. Uh, the last page of the summary is just, uh, I tried to summarize uh, the, the total f uh, finances of the district. The top section is called the government-wide financial statements. And it's a full accrual method of accounting where you capitalize your fixed assets, you record depreciation expense, uh, debts recorded as a liability. So walking you through the, uh, the balance sheet there, uh, you'll see that uh, the cash investments went down slightly from prior year. Uh, the capital assets, net of depreciation expense, uh, was about $171 million. And in theory, we're depreciating your capital assets over their estimated useful life. And uh, if that's the case, you have about 60% of the life left of the assets of the district, which is very positive. You'll see that the debt uh, was a pay down in 2018. Um, one accounting change happened with the OPEB obligation, and that's the other post-employment benefits, basically uh, medical coverage provided to retirees. The uh, GASB changed the method of calculating that, and also PEASERS also provides a, a benefit 
uh, in that for, for the OPEB also. So that liability has to be added on this year, which is why uh, that jumped from 5.7 up to almost 17 million. Again, predominantly because of factoring in the, the PEASERS uh, issue also. Uh, the pension liability on the positive side with PEASERS, that actually went down about 7 million. Uh, there's still a negative balance sheet or negative net position of 190 million. And unfortunately, that's really related to the pension liability and the OPEB liability. Most of the revenue and expenses uh, were pretty comparable year to year, and that worked its way down to a net change or a deficit of about 5.8 million. And again, a lot of that dealt with the, the change in the OPEB accounting. Uh, we also report the general fund as a separate governmental fund. Uh, your fund balance at the end of 2018 was a little bit over 35 million. Uh, about 14 million was unassigned and you committed 12 million to be uh, towards the, any PEASERS fluctuation and about 6 million in capital projects. And again, it's not a legal restriction and you as the board can change that monthly or daily, um, but that's how it was at the end of 2018. And there's actually a deficit in the general fund of about 946,000. So even with that deficit, you had actually gone into the year budgeting about a $5 million deficit, so you really had a favorable budget to actual of, of a little bit over $4 million. Uh, a comment at the bottom, uh, again, on the single audit work. Again, that's compliance testing based on what the federal government dictates to us, and we had no findings and nothing to, re to report there. So that's a, a quick run through of the of the, the main financial statements. The other book I passed around is uh, we do about 25 school districts and at the end of the cycle we just summarize the data uh, to give you a chance to see how you compare or line up with, uh, with our other clients. The Chamonix is number 18 uh, in that book and that's more just for your information. We're 18 out of 25? Yes, but not, not by size or anything, just by basically uh, when you were finished with, with the audit. No, it's not, not a ranking, though. No, it's just... It's just, just uh, Do you have them, by any chance, do you have them ranked anywhere? Or? Uh, we probably have back in the office, we do, yes. But there would be different categories, whether you use fund balance or net position or uh, amount of debt that uh, exists. I'd be curious to see it, if you can get it to us later regarding fund any, balance. Any fund balance? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll pass that on then. So our net change was a negative $5.8 million on the accrual basis. The accrual basis, yes. You had about $7 million of that was depreciation expense. More of the focus is on the general fund because that's your you say normal say $7 million was depreciation aid? I'm sorry. In total for last year, you had about $7 million of depreciation. Uh, but again, the main operating fund would be the general fund, and, and that's how you really keep your books and do your budgeting, and that's how the monthly reports are prepared. The government-wide is just a once, once a year uh, balance sheet that's issued. The pension liability went from 289 to 283. <coughs> is that just a funding mechanism? Or a well, uh, PEASERS calculates the, uh, the liabilities for all the districts, and then they allocate it out to you individual shares. We had other districts that actually went up a little bit, uh, so it's mainly based on their asset performance and also just on your employee mix that's reported into to PEASERS. But that doesn't, that's not telling us how much we're actually paying, though. That's just telling us how our unfunded or, or I, our, our, that's our liability. Total, that's a potentially the, the total unfunded Funded liability. liability. Okay. Yeah, you know, so that's a 20, 30 20, year liability. 20, right. um, and, and again, it's a uh, mix based on asset performance and also the allocation of employees. In the, uh, in the report, and I, I had it labeled here, but I think I lost it. You made a notation here about our, um, um, our drop in revenue. I think it's in your analysis. Is that the management discussion? Yeah. Yes, in the management discussion. Are you seeing that in all 
I don't want to say all the other districts that you, that, that you watched, but are you seeing that trends continuing that uh, many di that excuse me, many districts are still spending more than their their revenues? General fund last year, that was a predominant result, yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Is there anything consistent from district to district that's causing that deficit? Uh, I guess there's a, usually an evaluation of the board of the, the total general fund fund balance. And uh, again, it's uh, trying to minimize any tax, tax increases of um, you know, using some of that fund balance for that purpose. But the percentage of increase across all districts is is about the same. Don't most districts are seeing their payroll related expenses are, are their number one driver of everything, right? Uh, that's two thirds of your your budget. Right, right. Yes. So that for every district, it's basically the same. They're seeing those same incremental increases that are that are causing their their operating deficits. For, for the most part, yes. We have a few districts that uh, actually cut. Headcount. Uh, oh, they did. Yes, they cut down their their employees. Yeah, that's very very rare though. Okay, um, but we, right. we had a few with that. Yes. All right. Thank you. Sure, that, that'd be fine. Well, again, technically it's public information. They all put it on their website, but we just don't flag any individual names on that. Yeah. Okay, I think I think we're good. Anybody else have any other questions? Or? Appreciate it, Ed. Thank you very right, much. Thanks, thanks Glad you're feeling better. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry about last month. All right, that brings us to the first public comment period. Uh, Mrs. Burns. Steve Rodas. Sir, please state your name, where you live, and uh, what you do. <laughs> Tell you all that would take up my three minutes. <laughs> I'm sure of that. And in any event, I am Steve Redis. I live in the villages of Flowers Mill. Um, I, I, there's a couple of things I, I'd like to go in the order in which I, I, I would like you to explain the purpose of the tolling agreement with the Wood School, which appears in today's agenda. Uh, I mean, I, I read the agreement and it doesn't say really anything other than you're going to toll the statute of limitations. But there must be a reason that you're tolling the statute of limitations. Uh, number two, I was amazed to find that the, uh, the school district pays $1.37 million in 2017-2018 to uh, uh, charter schools, cyber charter schools, which uh, that figure amazed me because that's like over 100 students going to cyber, cyber charter schools. So I want to commend you for your support of the Senate, Senate Bill 34 and the House Bill 526, since uh, they both apply to my favorite whipping post, which is the cyber charter schools, who, despite their advertising of their own greatness, still perform in the bottom 5% for educational performance in the state of Pennsylvania. So if we could eliminate that great expense, that would be fantastic. But of course, you have to convince the parents that, they're, they're, that the state, when they take their numbers, actually mean something. So finally, hopefully, it is way past time to enter into a contract with the people who take care of the Chamonix School District. 
You know who they are. They are always here because they always lend their support and aid to the district. Despite um, the auditor's report, um, you probably, in the budget, made some money if you don't settle a contract anyhow because you always have to post it at what you offer, which is always more than what you actually pay. And so the difference comes down to the bottom line. In any event, the uh, support staffs of the Chamonix uh, need to have their contract settled. Uh, when I was driving over here today, uh, I heard on my radio a, sound, a song from the 50s, which was from Pajama Game, seven and a half cents. That was what they were arguing about in their contract 70 years ago. Uh, seven and a half cents didn't mean a heck of a lot, but it goes a long way. Right now, it should be about seven and a half dollars in today's money. And then you would probably satisfy uh, the people that work for Chamonix because they do an outstanding job and they deserve uh, your support in more than words in actual contract uh, appropriations. Thank you. Anna Borsos. Hi, my name is Anna Borsos and I live in Langhorn. I'm a proud Nishamini graduate. My children are also Nishamini grads. I'm a taxpayer. I'm an instructional assistant at a, in a Nishamini school district, school Hoover, in an emotional support classroom, which is not always easy. This was not what I went to school for originally, but I decided to work for the district so that I could stay home and be there for my children to build their futures. I wanted to make you aware of who I was. I work hard supporting my students. I'm a dedicated employee. The day our school was evacuated due to carbon monoxide in the building, I stayed. Yes, I was told I could leave, but they were my kids and I had to make sure they got home safely. I am also a mentor to two students at Hoover. I do this, they're not in my classroom, I do this on my own time, during my lunch periods and on my breaks. I've worked for the district for 15 years, first at Lower South, then at Ferdabar, and now at Hoover. I've participated in numerous talent shows, spring and fall fairs, spaghetti dinners, school musicals. I'm on a PBIS team. I have worn Buddy the Bully Free Mascot costume at Lower South. That was on my bucket list. So. The reason why I tell you all this is because I don't know if you realize all the extra things your employees do. I look around this room and I know many of them do the same thing I do, and it's all on my time, not yours. We are very dedicated people. I am a part-time employee. I don't have the opportunity to become a full-time employee for Nishami because you're not doing that anymore. I receive four sick days, five if I used all my four with the doctor's note and one personal day per year to take away more benefits, to outsource more employees. You are doing your students, this district, and your support staff a disservice. Please don't break our spirit. I respect, I hope you can respect us and see our worth to this, dis to this district in your negotiations. Thank you. Jay, Jay Sarriton. My name is Jay Sarajan. I'm a retired Lieutenant Colonel, U.S. Army. I've set up satellite communication terminal service in U.S. Embassy all around the world. My specialty was in crypto uh, graphics for the satellite communications equipment. Uh, I live about one block away from where the proposed cell phone tower is going to be installed uh, at uh, 
proposed to install at uh, Poquessing Middle School. Um, I've done extensive studies in the effects of EMIs on individuals, especially children. I have a, uh, several reports from the University of Arizona that has a team that's looking into this. And I have some copies here I'd like to give to members of the school board. It takes too long to go through it right now. But I'd like to give them copies. I'll give you my card. If you'd like to discuss it, I'll come in and discuss it with you. As I said, I'm retired. I'm also an amateur radio operator, so I know where you're coming from on antennas. However, putting them this close to a middle school is way too dangerous, and I have the documentation to prove it. Thank you. I'll move to item 2.2, .2, routine matters. I'd like to make a motion to approve item 2.01 minutes, 2.02 .02, treasurer's report, 2.03 check register and pro procurement card purchases, 2.04 budget transfers, 2.05 bids, 2.06 investments, 2.07 <coughs> exonerations. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Mr. Allen. Any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes nine to zero. Pers eight to zero. Mr. Feather's not here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> personnel administrative. Uh, Mr. Puritano. Thank you. Be it resolved that the Neshaminy School Board of Directors hereby approves the following retirements and resignations of administrative staff. Terry Hittenberger, Human Resource Director, resignation effective June 22nd, 2019. Uh, may I have a second? Second by Mr. Kovitz. Comments or questions? I'd like to recommend a no vote on this motion. <laughs> uh, what, no? No, way. I can't do that? <laughs> okay. I just want to thank uh, Mrs. Hintenberger for her years of service in the Chamonix. Uh, I found her to be an invaluable resource uh, for the times we needed her input and um, I just want to wish her well I know it, you've had a long tenure uh, in the system and um, just uh, have fun be good and uh, don't forget us we still may need you so thank you all in favor aye aye, aye. <laughs> yeah I know right opposed uh, <laughs> Motion passes uh, eight to zero. Personnel certificated, that would be me. I'd like to make a motion to approve item 4.01, retirements, resignations, end of assignments. 4.02, leaves of absence. 4.03, revised leaves of absence. 4.04, revised return some leave. 4.05, appointments. 4.06, co-curricular resignations. 4.07, co-curricular appointments. 4.08, ancillary appointments. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Hollenbeck. Comments or questions? I'd just like to make a comment. I just want to uh, thank uh, one of our retirees with 33 years of service, uh, leaving Pearl Buck Elementary, uh, Ms. Kathleen Smith. Uh, your service and tenure in the Chamonix is highly appreciated. And uh, Ms. Denise Brad at uh, 17 years as a... Uh, uh, Maple Point. So, thank you very much for your service. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes eight to zero. Personnel support. Mrs. Hollenbeck. I'd like to make a motion to approve 5.01 retirements, resignations, end of assignments. 5.02 leaves of absence. 5.03 revised returns from leave. 5.04 appointments, 5.05 co-curricular resignations, and 5.06 co-curricular appointments. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Bowman. Comments or questions? 
we also the board wants to take this opportunity to uh, we have four people with almost 20 years plus service leaving a uh, uh, Carol Barish 24 years of service Marie DeAngelis with 30 years of service Margaret Jensen with 22 years of service and Jerry Panofsky with 18 years of service thank you again for your service from the Chamonix and I hope you enjoy your retirement well deserved any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes 8-0. to zero. Educational development, Mrs. Boyle. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve um, 6.01, which is revised 2018-19 school calendar with the, uh, the 2019 graduation date, and 6.02, which is home instruction. Got to get a second. Second, Mr. Kovitz. Any comments or questions? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes eight to zero. Business operations, Mrs. Hollenbeck. I'd like to make a motion to approve 7.02, the tolling agreement with Wood Services, Inc. 7.03, the 2017-2018 audit. 7.04, to Sheba Lease and 7.05 Sunday facility usage. Can I get a second? One more. No, 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 we're pulling them out. Yeah, pulling them out. Second by Mr. Allen. Comments or questions? Can we give the public an explanation for the, what the tolling agreement is? Yes, Mr. Jones. Or, or John. John, you wanna do it? Sure, sure thank you. Um, there is um, tuition that is owed to Wood Services uh, from the Chamonix School District, a of, the source of which is to come from the state. We anticipate this money uh, to be received uh, soon, but the statute of limitations is set to expire, and to avoid a lawsuit, this tolling agreement is uh, required. So. Mr. Mr. Torrente, could uh, you also add to that for the uh, public's knowledge uh, why these type of arrangements are, are required under state law? For the reimbursement of the tuition assignments? Sure. It's, it's a statutory requirement that uh, schools such as Wood Services uh, are to receive um, tuition reimbursements from uh, various school districts uh, throughout the state, but the payment has to come through the Shamini School District um, from other school districts, and in some cases the state if the students are considered uh, or deemed to be wards of the state. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any other comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motions pass 8 to 0. 7.01. The IU, actually. <laughs> 7.01 support for Senate Bill 34 and House Bill 526, Cyber Charter School Legislation. Whereas a growing number of school districts across the state are responding to the need to successfully operate high quality full-time cyber education programs within their traditional district programs that provide flexibility and personalized options as a choice for students and families. And whereas school district cyber programs include rigorous curriculum aligned with the state academic standards and taught by appropriately certified teachers, and school districts can provide their cyber education students with regular and special education instruction and services, tutoring, career counseling, and other support as necessary. <clears throat> and whereas cyber education programs operated by school districts provide students with a smooth transition to and from traditional school settings and give students opportunities to participate in district instructional courses and resources, and students may choose to participate in extracurricular activities such as athletics, band, music, clubs, and social activities such as homecoming and prom, and students may graduate in district ceremonies and receive a district diploma. <clears throat> and whereas the Commonwealth is the sole authorizer of cyber charter schools, yet the tuition costs for students attending these schools are borne by school districts and local taxpayers, and whereas the majority of cyber schools have consistently placed in the bottom 5% for education performance in the state, 
Further, graduation rates of cyber charters are constantly and substantially below state average. And whereas the current funding formula for cyber charter schools is based on school district expenditures with no relationship to the actual instructional costs for regular and special education instruction and services for the students attending the charter school, <clears throat> And funding of cyber charter schools cost the Neshaminy School District taxpayers more than $1.37 million in 2017-18. And whereas school districts that operate high-performing cyber programs can do so at significantly re reduced costs as compared to paying tuition to a cyber charter school, enabling them to retain critical funding in the district for the benefits of all students, <clears throat> And whereas Senate Bill 34 and House Bill 526 supports school districts that provide their own cyber education programs by removing the financial responsibility for resident students who enroll in cyber charter schools instead of the district's program. <clears throat> now, therefore, be it resolved that the Neshaminy Board of School Directors hereby supports Senate Bill 34 and House Bill 526 or other efforts to provide a fiscally common sense approach that will provide savings for school districts operating full-time online learning programs and are required to make tuition payments for their students to attend cyber charter schools. Be it further resolved that a copy of the resolu resolution be submitted to the elected senators and representatives of the Neshaminy School District in the General Assembly and to the Governor of Pennsylvania. Can I get a second? Second. Second, Mr. Puritano. <coughs> Any comments or questions? Mr. Jones? I just want to clarify for the public, and the board's well aware that the Neshaminy School District started for this year for the first time in the Neshaminy School District Virtual Academy. Uh, that Virtual Academy has helped us to talk to parents and families of students who are in charter schools or who have been in charter schools and encourage them to come back and work with us. We have a much uh, more personalized program, a sound program. Our parents have been really satisfied with the work that we've been able to provide. We're hopeful that over time we would be successful, but something like this, legislation like this, uh, certainly makes sense, makes sense for schools like ours that provide this opportunity right here in district. Uh, the opportunities for students be above and beyond their academics is enhanced by being in district. They get to participate all the way up through graduation and graduation ceremonies. And so we're excited about what we're doing today. And some work like this at the state level would actually accelerate our opportunities to bring more students back into the district. Thank you so much. Yeah, I want to add to Mr. Jones' comments as uh, I know myself as a board member, I know the other board members that I've spoken to definitely feel that there, there is a need, some students, this is the right environment for them. Not the majority of students, but there are students and we need to provide these services and we're glad to do them. But as Mr. Rodas uh, mentioned at the podium and was in the, uh, in the uh, motion that we read, the performance overall of these cyber charter schools is ridiculously poor. I know there are Plenty of parents who have found success for their children in there, and I'm not knocking that, but as a board member, person in the community, and you as taxpayers that are seeing these expenditures going into these schools when their costs of operation are less than 20% of ours, but we're paying almost the same amount you send to a brick and mortar school is, is just really just terrible for us to have to continue to see us pay for the type of performance that is being gen generated. Not that anything should be on a paid performance, but it, it is so disparaging different from what we're obtaining and we're seeing in our regular schools. And I hope that we're going to see in the program that, that uh, Mr. Jones and his staff put together this year. Uh, I'm really hoping that the, the public supports this, the legislature supports it, and I really think it would be a step in the right direction for our students and the parents that feel they need this different setting for their children's education. So thank you. Anyone else? Okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion passes 8 to 0. 7.06, acceptance of donation. Whereas the Tawanka PTO and the Neshaminy Kids Club have offered to donate $2,548.25 each towards the purchase of fencing valued at $5,096.50.
And whereas this donation to the Neshaminy School District for fencing will allow for its installation at Tawanka Elementary. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Neshaminy School Board of School Directors hereby approves the aforementioned donation from the Tawanka PTO and the Neshaminy Kids Club. Can I get a second? Second by Mrs. Boyle. Comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Motion passes 8-0. to zero. Policy, Ms. Boyle. I'd like to make a motion to approve um, 8.01, which is the second reading of policy series 800, which is operations, and 8.02, which is the retirement of existing NSD policies. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Hollenbeck. Comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 8 to 0. Okay, 8.01, other board business. you wish to speak please approach the podium uh, sir your name where you're from <laughs> and what song you heard on the radio tonight uh, good, uh, <laughs> good evening again hello again uh, I'm still Steve Rodas I still live in Langhorn unless, <laughs> unless my wife moved out with me and I didn't, I didn't even know about it at any event, I, I wanted to address um, the question that the uh, Army, I believe, was the Army that you were in? Yeah, I wanted to address the question about the uh, telephone towers. I know that you can make uh, pretty good money off of these telephone towers, but I got to assume, I got to hope that somebody somewhere will perhaps listen to some scientific uh, presentation on the matter uh, because I think it is necessary to do this where children are involved. And it's nice to know that somebody somewhere in this country believes in science. So thank you. Anyone else? Brings us to the board comment section. Steve. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Um, first of all, the uh, comments about the cell tower. Um, there's uh, four of us that uh, sit on the um, facilities uh, committee, uh, myself, Mr. Sullivan is the chair. Mr. Feather is absent today, and, and uh, Mr. Allen. Uh, currently, uh, we are still in the planning stages. Uh, uh, Verizon is responsible for bringing the proposal to the uh, Lower South Board of Supervisors, to get it properly zoned, and the technical specifications and the relationships to EMF. Um, I've myself personally have done some reading um, I appreciate anything that you want to put forth to the board and to have us read um, there are varying opinions in the literature that I've read um, most people or most uh, uh, reports that, I, that I've read so far and I'm sure there's many differing is that carrying you know a cell phone with you uh, exposes you to more EMF than you get from a tower that's 90, 100 feet in the air. I'm not a scientific expert on EMF by any way. You know, I'm, I'm doing this as, as we go along. Uh, we have to have a larger discussion of EMF that we're exposed to um, every day. Um, all our schools now are, are highly wireless. We have, uh, you know, routers in almost every room and every school. You know, uh, I don't know if people under know or not, but those routers, the ones you have in your home, they put out EMF too. Um, you know, how much exposure is too much? How much is too much for a child? Um, we're looking to, you know, 
the material that we're getting, we're looking to what Verizon's providing, and also what the public, you know, has to say about it. Currently, our agreement is as is as a basically as a landlord only. It's additional revenue for the district, uh, but of course, you know, the full board will have to make a decision on whether or not they feel this um, proposal from Verizon is something that we want to engage in ultimately. Uh, but you know, we as board members are definitely open to any information that anyone from the public wants to provide and, and we'll review it and uh, you know we'll w give it its weight uh, when it comes time to make a decision but uh, lower southampton it, it is going to be the i think the best area where this discussion needs to take place because they're the ones that have to go through the zoning and the planning but you know it's our responsibility to it the school board because we will be the, the landlords of it so you know we we definitely want to hear from you if you have an objection or if you're in favor of it you know either way um what was that other thing oh the um the twonka pto i want to thank you for your donation uh very generous all our ptos have been very generous this year to, to all our schools um i want to uh say thank you again to our support staff who's been coming out regularly at the meetings uh, we do en enjoy seeing you i appreciate your comments from the podium uh, we are working hard uh, towards a settlement uh, you know we're not going to get into contract negotiations from the board podium um, we've been at it 14 months we're going to continue to get at it until we uh, hopefully get an agreement uh, this board is values all of you that's why we're at the table talking um, we continue to, to uh, look forward to uh, the continued engagement and see if we can come to a solution that we feel we all can live with. Uh, we know today uh, that the uh, underlying reasons for everything we do is what we talked about earlier during the audit, what we can afford to do. And uh, we're trying to uh, meet those needs. Uh, we've been trying to have this discussion uh, openly uh, at the table. Uh, there's plenty of you, you know, at the table, so it's, uh, you know, there's many voices there. Uh, so we'll continue to work with that group and uh, see what solutions uh, we can come to a final agreement with. In the end, uh, both sides are going to find that they're going to they're going to give a little. That's the nature of negotiations, and uh, um, hopefully that uh, you know we'll soon be able to resolve it. But there are certain things that. Your group has expressed that they need, and there's certain things that our group has expressed we need, and that's the reason why we're we're there. So we hope to continue and uh, hopefully uh, solve it as soon as we can. So thank you. Mr. Allen? Uh, yes, I'd like to, <clears throat> uh, pardon me. Uh, Terry, I want to thank you for your uh, years of service to the Chamonix. You were uh, one of the first board um, cabinet members who uh, who I uh, came in contact with on my first meetings, and it just amazed me how quickly you had everything at your your uh, fingertips when the questions came up, and it was, uh, you know, some salaries, uh, positions, years people were involved in the district, um, and I'm I for one am going to miss having you with those meetings. So, wish you very well. Moving on. Um, just a couple quick things. Also, um, I want to th thank the uh, Tawanka PTO and the Chamonix Kids Club. That was very generous uh, for the uh, purchase of the fencing around the, I think it's kindergarten playground. And um, Lady Skins Basketball. I am probably not the right person for this. I'm not a basketball player or a big fan, but uh, I was following along on our social media, and boy, they really, really caught the spirit of the Chamonix. And uh, uh, you know, did us proud. Um, first time in history to make the final four. That's a big accomplishment. And uh, hats off to them. And young Mr. Savian Hebron. Wow, that's. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you my times, but those are my events: 200 meter dash and, and a four by four relay. And uh, that that's just impressive. State champion. That's that's great. Um, again, hats off to him and uh, all. Fantastic representatives of our Shamanty community, and uh, so glad to see you uh, doing so well. Um, that's it for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, <clears throat> to, the, to the folks such as yourself, ma'am, that came up and spoke, um, 
I think you're going to find, with the exception of a few people that are actually paid to be here tonight, uh, and even in concern to them, most of us are here because we're very passionate about the school district and the kids that are within it. Uh, we love hearing the stories of Savion and you know some of these these other kids, the little junior chemists, and the, all, all these things going on in the in the district. We're all very passionate about it, and um, and I mean, from my standpoint. You know, everybody here on the board, we, we, <laughs> we're elected volunteers. Uh, you know, we work very, we work very hard, uh, and, and we understand. We understand what it's like to put in extra time. Uh, as a teacher, myself, I put in a lot of extra time, more than I get paid for. But that's okay. That's just what we do. That's, that's our call, our call to service. So, um, but don't think for a moment there isn't anybody up here that doesn't appreciate the work that you do, and everyone, everyone comes out here in a red shirt. I mean, every, every time that we have our meeting, it's wonderful. It's great to see you, and um, and we to to uh, parrot a little bit or dovetail onto Mr. Peritano's words. Uh, we we truly want to see something, something mutually uh, beneficial uh, come forward. So you're, you guys are definitely appreciated and, uh, and we love it every time you come out to be here with us. So, um, uh, again, in regard to, sir, to your comments, um, I'm a recovering engineer and rocket science, uh, scientist. I've, I've worked on commercial communication satellites. I know the, uh, I'm familiar with some of the effects of radio frequency, AKA RF. So um, I would certainly welcome any documentation you have. Uh, I would certainly want to review it and, and see. The last thing I would want is to put any of our kids in any type of danger. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank uh, Terry for, for all of her help. You know, she certainly will be missed. And I wish you well. Um, and I also want to thank uh, all the support people who uh, who come this week and other weeks and I want you to know that you are appreciated and I know I speak for the rest of the board when I say that. Okay. Anyone else? No. I'll go. Terry, I would like to mirror what some other people have said that you will definitely be missed. Um, you've been very helpful to all of us here on the board. Um, Although well, Mr. Firm is not here, uh, he helped me realize a couple things. Number one, why I got out of auditing and stayed in tax. Uh, number two, um, you know, the, the financial issues that Neshaminy has isn't unique to Neshaminy. I think all school districts uh, throughout the state, at least in this area, are going through it. I mean, uh, there's limited funds. Uh, we want, yeah, we want to take care of our people, no doubt, but there's uh, only so much money to go around. And uh, it is good having the uh, support workers here. I'm just curious if you still show up after the contract's settled. I'm curious to see what happens there. So uh, hopefully you do. So uh, with that, if no one else has anything, uh, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> All right.